Hello and welcome back to another episode of Construction Sport Weekly. It's been a couple of weeks, been very, very busy, and I've been told off by the media team because I haven't been in the studio to record, so we fell out of a sink a little bit. But we are back on track and we are here to record live to the world about what we have been up to. Today I've been up to Cambridgeshire. Um, with the great team at Graham Construction and also National Highways and a number of their supply chain, um, WJ, Big Painting Firm, Toppers Field, the road surfaces. We all went out collecting plastic again, going out doing a bit for the rubbish. We actually collected the plastic sleeves that you see what people use to plant trees. So 20 years ago, loads were planted across the highway sector and they should have been collected within four or five years and they wasn't so 20 years later we're there going out and doing it i've collected about twelve thousand in the last two days i went out there today took the second day missed out yesterday because i was in london and i went there today and took the cream and looked like i'd done it all so thank you very much national highways that was good crack it was good to get out and do a bit and meet a few new faces but yesterday we had our first construction sport 100 club members meetings so we have a members section for businesses that are all part of the construction network and that also sign up to be part of construction sport to work with us to pretty much support them with their mental health and well-being uh, objectives and then also a way of them getting their team involved with what we are up to so it was great 20 companies have come on board in the last couple of weeks and it's full of good people so we put them all in the same room yesterday and we had a good chin wag few coffees, few, uh, few croissants. Last week, I was out on site. I was back on the tools. So I was grafting. Grafting, they said. Yeah, we were doing some work again over for ringways on a Surrey council project, doing footpaths, uh, sheep hiding, curbing, tarmac. Um, a bit of tarmac and put a lot of type 1 down. Lots of different stuff. And it, yeah, it was good. Good crack. I, I effing enjoyed being back on the tools for a bit you know saying that talking back on the tools i done my cscs test the other week as i told you all i refused to pay for an app that then tells me the answers so i went in blind and i can confirm i have now graduated and passed with honors the cscs touchscreen test with a whopping 48 out of 50 i was adamant i got 50 out of 50 i was would have put a lot of money on it and I didn't. I don't know what I got wrong, so there's something I missed in the construction world, but I wasn't allowed to know the two answers that I missed. Don't know why. Don't know why it wouldn't tell me. Maybe it's in case I share that information. Top, top secret information. We've got quite a busy summer coming up on our groundwork side, what is very, very interesting and very, very exciting. So we're waiting for the go-ahead on a few things, and yeah, we get back out. Go after a bit. I like it. It's good. Pays the bills, does all that, and then we can have this media and the, the charity side alongside as well pushing the right agendas forward to help drive a positive change. We'll be playing football again. It has been confirmed middle of May on the 17th of May. We are playing at Haybury Swift Football Club in Essex. We have a company behind the scenes that have come forward and said, can we be part of it? Who will be announced? The big housing developer has said that we want to show a bit of support in the community where we live. And they're going to get behind it, hopefully. So that's cool. Vinci's actually come back to us as well. We'll be playing football against them in June or July. June, July. One of those. One of the Jays. I mean, summer. Got to get a rugby match in there. Got to get a rugby match together soon. We got the uh, the boys are chomping at the bit to get out and have another game. So we're looking at taking on maybe a military team uh, this year um, or two. The police are hunting for a blundering dumper truck thief. The construction inquirer reported. What oh, funny. Police in Scotland are hunting for a plant thief who made a hash of stealing a dumper truck from a construction yard in the Moray area over the weekend. Officers said the raider gained entry to the yard in a marine place in Bucky before starting up the machine. If anyone doesn't know, dumper truck dumpers are actually very easy to start. Most of them will have the same bloody key. Once behind the wheel, the robber drove the dumper straight into a fence before attempting to drive it up a bank without success before abandoning the machine. The thief then made a failed attempt to start an excavator on the site before fleeing. Uh-oh. Computer says no to the thief, and he walks away empty-handed. There you go. City thief. Theft is annihilating the construction world as ever, especially in desperate times. I'm sure the police probably reported that crime goes up when huge financial issues are coming into place for the whole world. That theft is an easy way out for some, but... 
Leave our tools alone. There's a lot of it going on again. I see a lot of vans getting broken into. Tell me, what is the best van to have in terms of security? Because we had a little debate about this. All I know is that Ford Transit seem to get taken like there's no tomorrow. You just pop in the front of it, put, your, put a coat hanger in the bloody key slot thing, and you're away. Vauxhalls, Nissans, and Renaults. From what I've heard is you just fold the doors in half because they're made of pretty much tin foil. If there's anything else out there, the Volkswagens, are they the strongest of the ones? Are they the Iron Mike Tysons of the van world? Please let us know what your preferred option of a van is, what you feel is the safest in terms of security, or would you just go with any van and put on additional locks, some bolt locks, some dead locks, some steering wheel locks, whatever you want to do. Tell us your views on vans and van theft and how you secure your tools. Langer Rourke wins Calderdale Hospital contract. So Langer Rourke win another job. It's amazing what can happen when you kill a few people. You just carry on winning jobs. Simple as. Let them die. We'll get the next job sorted and over the line in no time. No worries, boys. All right, shake up at the top construction charities. But they're not the top, are they? We are. We all know that. We're the top. We're the top construction spoke. The leadership of three constructions, biggest charities is changing as two industry stalwarts announce their retirement stalwarts. That's one word to call them. Lighthouse Chief Bill Hill will retire at the end of this week after more than a decade at the helm of the wellbeing support charity. Yeah, well done, Bill. 10 years of making mental health and construction a lot worse. Crap on sunshine. Lighters, don't shut the door. Slam it. Crash have announced they're getting a new CEO. And Mates in Mind, I think, have taken on a new CEO. Yeah, all the best to Sarah Meek, who left Mates in Mind. She was good last year. We had a real good crack. She really got involved with what we were up to. Um, we spoke many a times and many a cups of coffee, and she was good. Um, I don't know who the new CEO is. Um, someone's obviously going to be taken over, but hopefully she'll put her head out there. She or he will put her head at the parapet and come and help us do the change because who knows it'd be nice to these charities aren't they these big charities these multi-million pound organizations to um maybe have someone head them up who knows construction firsthand is it us or just people who know the systems of how it works payment systems everything like that will adds to it but more importantly what it's like to be on the ground of the industry because i know even from last week being on the ground when you're on the ground of the industry there's no sign of any charity to support you when you're down there begging and grafting to work day to day. The only person out in this construction industry to help you is yourself. Everyone else is against you. That's what it seems like. Um, and that's us as well, speaking as a charity. We realize that we can't do everything to support everyone, but we do as much as we can to support the people that need help as and when. But does the interest this industry just need to wake up and realize mental health in construction is in desperate need of change? But we... I feel like it, not deflated this year, but in a way it's a bit like, wake up and smell the coffee, guys. Nobody in this industry at the top in a position what could actually change it gives a flying foo. So nothing will change. Um, pressures of the job get worse and worse. Payment systems aren't gonna change. Um, we're gonna have to go out every single day and just fend for ourselves. And no matter how many of us kill ourselves, they still won't change a thing. Lots of virtue signaling. We love that. There's so much going on. It's brilliant. They look fantastic, all these companies showing how much support they do for the mental health of their workforce. Ultimately, they do nothing. If someone can, please put someone in touch with me that has changed something at the top of this industry to make things better. And I seem to be talking about unfairly about them. Just let me know. But from what I can see and from the families that get in touch with us because their loved ones have killed themselves, it seems like nothing. Nothing is being done so CITB you crawl back into the media construction training body CITB is sitting on a 100 million pound cash pile despite the industry's ongoing skills crisis the 102.6 million pounds of current assets in the bank are detailed in the CITB's latest set of accounts for the year the training body is funded mainly by levy income from contractors which hit 170.6 million pounds last year CITB chiefs said the accumulation of funds was due to contractors being focused on areas other than training. Does that sound right? So they're saying companies aren't willing to come and have that money invested in them because they want to focus elsewhere. All right. A CITB spokesperson said, as a result of the pandemic, CITB has seen its reserves grow and the trend continued into 2023 where the economic backdrop impacted training uptake. Huh. So CITB are getting richer off the back of COVID and just keep themselves quiet while their money goes cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. This has meant that employers have been focused on areas that other than training, we are now seeing the demand of a training and claims for grant increase. Well, there we go. 
But have people just given up on the CITV maybe? Because we know the whole system's changing in this year, but it's quite boring, isn't it? The Euros is coming up. We need a construction worker from every single country that is playing in the Euros. The obvious ones, the English, the Irish. Well, I think the Irish are there. Yeah, I think they're in the group stage, aren't they? But the Scottish, I believe, are there. Romania in there, um, Albania in there. We can find those guys. We've got plenty of contacts in the industry who are from those nationalities, but there's a few other random ones in there. If you feel that your team is a kind of underrepresented nationality in this country, then please let us know what your team is and we will give you some further details soon. What will incorporate a good day out with us. There'll be more of that to come. More of that to come, I promise you. Baltimore, Baltimore Bridge, gone, gone. Literally like that. We do a bit of work. Um, in the port industry, shall we say. What happens is when these ships have issues, like we see with the ships that now have to go around Africa because of stuff going on in the Middle East, that affects everybody in the end because it just massively puts pressure on all the container ship companies. What ultimately puts pressure on goods coming to our country, what ultimately means that companies have to pay more money to get those goods to the country, what ultimately means they pay more money, what means that cost of everything along that chain falls on top of each other and the person who has to pay for it at the bottom is the person who wants to buy that shampoo or that pack of pasta that's come in that container. So when you see this bridge getting hit by this boat, it will have impact on our economy. I guarantee you, I've seen it before in the last few years. A little bit worrying actually because we're in an industry obviously or in a world at the moment where no one can afford to even wake up in the morning and go work because all the money just goes back onto bills but there is uh yeah that was shocking that i'm not sure if you see it but it looked like the power of the boat actually completely went and then next you know bang hits the bridge and within seconds that bridge just went down like a set of dominoes but it just shows you these bridges though doesn't it you think they're engineered into um the most safe way impossible but one little smack on a piece of uh, steel in the wrong place or concrete or whatever then the whole thing comes down will we will we see this as a change into engineering will there be backup kind of pillars or foundations put in place the us are claiming it's going to cost 15 million dollars per day and i think old um the old boy over there mr biden has said don't worry we're paying for it all the yanks just loving me can we spend some cash let's go for it cash cash dollars dollars bills bills lower terms crossing planning decision moves a step closer the examining authority has sent their recommendation report on the lower terms crossing development consent order to the secretary of state transport we're, we're not far from there we're talking of bridges and for rivers this is a tunnel um yeah we went out last saturday vintage tractor event going on great group of people are driving from london hendon big irish bar they're called the claddering they're driving their tractors 16 or 18 mile an hour all the way to the northwest coast of ireland donegal so they're doing that in support of two charities and one of them is us construction sport so the guys over there doing that for us we are hugely thankful because there is a lot being done i went to a, a great night on saturday with them there's some great fundraising going on and um, they really are supporting us in a, in a way that's never been seen before so we're massively thankful for that and the guys at hunter plant hire as well uh, liam o'malley over there and tom hardiman of tfl thank you very much we don't get much funding come our way um, and haven't done since our start so any funding that we can get in our direction is hugely hugely appreciated that's about it guys i won't go on too much longer you've got it ourselves away for a few weeks i do apologize i know you've all been waiting to go think, where is he where is he we want some rubbish content again over and out take care all the best have a lovely 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 easter thank you